Hi, I'm Wilson. It's great to see you again. Today, I'm going to do something special. Here in my hands, I have the Cort Cortex DSP processor, and it's worth around uh, $2,000. This is a nearly brand new device. I just bought it for the capability testing of the MIDI Captain. Of course, I'm also very excited to experience the sound quality of this multi effects device. I'm a big fan of all the guitar multi effects and uh, guitar related electronics. However, in today's video, besides spending just about 2 minutes on the MIDI control section, all the rest is about the tail down of this device. I am absolutely a tear down man, and I like tear down all the devices rather than build them. I have taken a part of almost all my guitar multi effects and my personal electronics, and even the TV and the refrigerator at my home. Today, I will quickly tear down this device and check many about two things. So, one is about this switch, which is also an encoder. I want to see the internal structure about this. And the other is the core chip about this DSP processor. I want to see the part number and uh, uh, what, what CPU inside. I think you may be curious about this as well. So let's start. Okay, now this is the MIDI Captain standard and this is called Cortex. And we're using a MIDI cable from the MIDI out of the MIDI Captain to MIDI in of the Cort Cortex. And you can power on the MIDI Captain with several methods, uh, USB cable or the adapter, as well as the batteries. If you use the non-standard version of the MIDI Captain, and you can also have this MIDI Mate, and you can have the wireless control. Now it's in the presets 1 of MIDI Captain, so this is not for Cort Cortex. Uh, still, you can control 1, 2, 3. This is tap for stomp box and not for this. And still, we can do the PC control, yes. I will introduce two presets for Cort Cortex. PC8 and all the control is PC control, program control. Let's try this first. So it will automatically restart. Okay, now it's the PC8. The name is PC8. So 1A, 1E, 1H. It's a range like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we go to next page 2A, 2F, 2H, B, C, D, E. F, G, H, and next, A, E, C, D, E. Yeah, this is very simple and uh, only for the PC program control. So nowadays, it's getting more and more popular that we have something called the thing control. Sometimes it is called a snapped. So the thing is basically the same signal chain, but we have different on-off combination and different parameters. With the same control, the switching can be faster. I think that's the main reason that people use the same control for the live performance. So all this same change is just within one program. So that is why we made a dedicated thing control presets for Cort Cortex. If I remember correct, it's the last one. The preset 10, okay, called X. Okay, so we can see the exactly the same thing control as the buttons on board the device. And this two is not for the program change anymore. It's for the tuner and the tapping. You can set the onboard buttons for other functions like the pedal, the stomp mode, and uh, for any of the module on off control. So this will be a much more popular way to use the MIDI control of Cort Cortex. Anyway, you can also customize the key functions uh, by going to the USB deep setting mode and uh, you can combine program control CC control, sync control, and, uh, and the expression patterns based on your needs. 
Okay, that is all for the MIDI control. And now let's go to the more exciting part. Let's tear down this device. Okay, I'm very excited now. This device can be very easily get hot. This is the first time I'm opening this device and I have no idea what can be found. Oh. Let's take a close look. So after several seconds, I have already know the basic structure of this device. Here is the board for the switches, and this board is for the interface. This this probably the analog uh, OPMs, and then the ADC, and uh, we we will check the chip. Uh, the part number in detail later and uh, this board is the Wi-Fi wireless module and this one because there is a separate switch and here is a small board for the switch and here is the DSP so it's the ADI Shark DSP uh, this one is very popular in all the multi effects uh, guitar effects uh, okay so not only one one two and this is a memory okay yeah, we will check in detail later. So basically, this is a whole structure. Okay, here I'm using a method to let you have a clear view of the part number. So this one, yeah, I have no idea about this one here. Yeah. And the CS logic, okay, this is the codec. So the OPFs were very common, very common ones, it's four, five, six, zero. And the very common ones for the audio interface, or the four five six zero. It's from JRC or yeah, it's from should be JRC. This is just a digital common logical chip. So this is a programmable uh, OP amp, should be. So with this one, we can change the analog again. Uh, using a digital control way. So there's another This should be ADC and ADC and this one should be DAC. Yes CS logic is very good and uh, I have used this uh, part for the audio interface Oh, from TI I have I have been working in TI What's the part number? It's just some power for power management, digital logic, power. The only one I have no idea is this one, so maybe I can check. Okay, let me ask Google. Yeah, it's an I.O. expander, so look at the position. It should be used for this board, for those switches to expand the I.O. Now it's time to go deeper. Yeah, let's see how to remove the boards. Sometimes we often use the jack hat instead of some screws. So for sure we need to remove this. Yeah, here is an interesting thing is that so we can see the manufacturer of called Cortex DSP has some kind of, mm, I mean, obsession. They made the head align. That it's something also we done. But actually, I think any mechanic engineer will not recommend to do so because it could be too loose or too tight. Uh, only if we want to keep the keep the alignment. But it looks much much better. I'm very glad that this screw is uh, is just the same the same size of the bottom one lose the last screws so the board be became totally loosed so no other no other support and uh, yeah it's it's gonna release Something I need to point out is that they use this uh, magnetic uh, ring uh, to reduce the EMI uh, problem. So that's a good thing. 
Okay, so we can see here it has something to secure this this jack. Yes, we can remove it. I know why they have to do this because when when I just put out, uh, it can be very easily. So without this, without this secure. So if we shake the device, it's unstable. Uh, I hate this because I know what what kind of glue this is. Yeah, yes, I I have this kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's something like this, and uh, it feels soft, but it's very tight and very hard to remove. I'm decided to open this one and this one and remove this, so this is much more easy. Here, it even have the sticker and the, to hold the wire. So I know why they have this one because this magnetic ring is too big and weight and uh, during the transportation or delivering and this one could uh, uh, shaking, 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 shaking. So the shaking will make the connection unstable. Okay, yeah, as I said, this, this kind of glue is much more easy to be removed. There is still a cable here. Whoa, do not remove. Now I have this board separated and from this side we can see here the power section and normally they will generate the positive and the minus voltage and uh, also for the digital part. This is a microcontroller. I think this one is used to sense all the connectors and uh, have some actions to the connectors. Here we can find uh, also PGA programmable amplifier. So OP amps, let's do this again. Here the OP amps, is, it's much high end. It's from Texas Instrument and uh, it's OPA 1642. They have the very classic 5532 capacitors and uh, this is very this is a very common design on the audio electronics this is the relay and this is very special they must be used as some analog switch and without any loss so it can be a true bypass so i'm a little surprised because this i know i know this component is from china and uh, uh, i actually i have this one in my hand I have also used this kind of release. So it's very small and uh, very high quality. Also very good price. And for MIDI in, there has no optic copper. So this inputs outputs, uh, it's a stacked uh, jack. So it, it, it used to save the space and they have some shared metal. And sometimes it is very difficult to connect the ground to the metal box. So this metal piece is very important. And we can see here, they need some special deal with the surface of the box. And because the aluminum box, the surface can be oxidized. So this can keep the good contact. Okay, that is all for this board. And we can move on. Here is another interesting thing. It's a touch switch and uh, actually it's for the power. And here is a dedicated circuit for this uh, touchpad sense. And this volume knob, there is the encoder board. These two resistors is amazing. The old fashioned resistors looks like it should not be in this board. And here we see there is an uh, SD card. They made a special secure uh, to avoid the card uh, just uh, slip out. We will have the answer to another question about the switch and the encoder. All the secret discovered. We can see this device and this is a typical encoder, but they make they make this encoder the handle very short and then they made this uh, we can see here. There's a component uh yeah they can and uh, it it in this encoder and so you can but but this 
But this is a plastic thing, so it could just think it could be fragile. Uh, we need to take care of, of, of these things, but I think the all the force will be loaded by the box. So this one is just to transfer the rotation to the shaft, and also you can push it. We have discovered the secret. A very clever design. And this is for the LED. Oh, it, it looks familiar. And I have some product just designed the same way. This board has a dedicated MCU deal with all the encoders output. So now it's very clear. And here we can see this box. Yeah, it's uh, it's a whole piece of aluminum uh, metal and uh, by the CNC manufacturing and to this box. So this box is really expensive. I I guess this box only it will take about uh one hundred to two hundred dollars about this box. This is a small piece of parts and uh, it's not connected to any of other uh, big parts, so it can be very easily get popped out. And uh, this could be a disaster during the manufacturing process. So this is a main processing board. I'm not gonna disconnect those uh, FPC. Let's just uh, see this way. In the back side, uh, almost uh, the capacitors uh, for the decoupling. And there is a position they should put on a battery here but uh, I think it's no use and uh, so the shark DSP uh, this is very powerful and uh, let's see more clearly so I'm not sure what this yeah this card doing but I think it's it's for user date a uh, very small card I don't know a version version old two and the size is very small. It could be just as information about uh, the ID or something. Uh, I need to say something about the issue about uh, uh, the device can be quickly get hot. So actually the truth is the heat is not from the processing board. This what we can see there is no, no touch to the power dissipation board and uh, this board will not have too much heat, so the problem is because of the display. We can see here that there is a huge heat dissipation metal and also connected to the box. This big screen will get very hot and the heat transfer to the whole box. So after some running time and this whole box get, get heat. So we don't have to worry about that because the processing is okay. Mm, maybe uh, the whole box get high temperature and this board works inside the box also uh, they have a very high temperature environment but i i think they won't affect the processing if they can have the cooling fan inside uh, at this position so we'll make the air flow to take out the heat i think that could be much better okay that's all for this tail down okay let me have some rough estimate about the whole cost so the box, like uh, I said, it's about 100 to 200, let's say 150. And this board, about $300. And uh, this board, uh, this board is 50. And other small things, another 50, 300 and 400. So at this one, 400, at this one, uh, 550, and this one, this one, this one, 100, so 600. It's the, so the whole cost is about the whole cost about this machine is about six hundred six hundred dollars six hundred to seven hundred but this is not including the manufacturing and uh, uh, design and and, and and any other stuff so only the material cost so about the selling price uh, I think it's a normal uh, position and the price. It's it's a good device and good design, very thoughtful manufacturing. And I can see all the engineers, they have very good knowledge and experience and very smart guys. And the sound of this device is amazing. I like it. When I assembly back the device and I found this switch, we cannot assembly from this side. It will be impossible to align all the 10 shaft just at the same time. I think this switch need to be screwed off and uh, assembly from this side.
so the switch is installed uh, from this side this is this is very unique and very clever design so normally it's get installed from the bottom uh, actually install the foot switches is the most time consuming process during the manufacturing and this one could even take much more time than others so about the cost i i'm not counting this so this special design foot switch this will be expensive so they have 10 cost cannot be ignored so now i'm lucky and i just uh, gather all the spring and uh, the components all back here I want to see more about the spring system about this switch. So it's a very clever design. The encoder itself, the shaft can be pushed, but uh, this spring here is to protect the pushing. Because no matter how hard you hit the button with your foot and how fast, but the finally the pushing pushing pressure is limited by this spring. So it won't hurt the encoder that's the most important thing let's have a clear view of this switch i don't think there is any tools can be used uh, during this step so you can only only make the work by your hand oh i'm sorry i i forgot to put this spring in so the function of this spring is just to lift the button and uh, push it upward and not loose like this i forgot about one thing but this this two row they have different lengths what <sighs> Almost done. Looks like everything's fine. Let's try to make a comparison. And uh, so now, no alignment. What do you see? This two thousand dollars device is like this. Feeling much better now, right? Yeah, this is the last piece. And let me check anything left on desk. okay my cord cortex get back so this is not a suspend video and i bought this device and i just tell down to see what's inside so for the cost estimation section i forgot the screen and also the foot switches so this will take a, a big part of the cost so we need to add back so the total cost should be i think this screen is close to 100 dollars and the foot switches together uh, about 50 so we add another 150 so the total cost uh, is close to like 800 so i think this device is worth the price and it's uh, it's actually a very valuable device and i, I also heard some people just uh, worried about the heat issue but uh, after my tail down i think this is not a big problem it's because of the screen the display is not that critical and uh, uh, all the heat you feel is all dissipated to the box actually your feeling when you touch the plate you, you think it's hot it's only like about 60 to 70 degree so that's not a big issue to the processor to the core chip so it's robust okay that's all about this video it's a long video and actually take much much longer for the video shooting and the cut and edit i need your support and your help to subscribe my channel and share the link to your friends and tell people about pent audio about me and about about the midi captain midi controller also i'm making something new and something really big it's still under development uh see you next time and uh, maybe i will shoot a dedicated video to show what i'm doing now see you mm -hmm.